All right, welcome everybody to the segment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the autonomous first order ODEs. Obviously, the first thing that I have to talk about is what exactly do I mean by this first word that I have, right? Um, the thing is that although it may look autonomous, it may have something to do with autonomous cars, etc. It has nothing to do with it in the mathematics, right? Autonomous simply means that, well, let's go ahead and express explain that you know it's a first order so I can express this like that right f of function of x comma y right now if this f of x comma y is not indeed a function of both x and y but rather it's only a function of y right so basically what happens is if I have a d dy dx that will be equal to f of y I, I don't have any presence of an x on the right hand side in this particular expression what was the specific thing about x? x is the independent variable. So I'm missing the independent variable here. So this type of equation is simply referred as autonomous equation. Obviously differential equation, but you know, um, equation at the end of the day. So typically, if you think about these kind of things, uh, I can give an example from the physical domain. We usually actually, uh, you know, autonomous uh, exists in real life when this independent variable that I have here is time, right? Sometimes things are not a function of time. So in this cases, if you think about x is time, I don't have any time on the right hand side. I'll give you an example. Um, if you don't know already, I'm a thermofluidics guy, so I'll give you examples from that end. This capital T is temperature, and this lowercase t is time, right? K is some kind of a constant, we'll talk about this. T minus T infinity or t ambient. So this is actually called Newton's law of cooling. So let's say that I have a block of steel at 8 degrees C and I put it into a, in a water bucket full of water at 20 degrees C. This will be what would be the function of the temperature. Okay, it, The behavior will be expressed by this equation. You can see on the right hand side I don't see any time dependence. right? So this is an example of an autonomous um, equation. But in the previous segment if you remember, I gave this dy dx is equal to 0.2xy. Do you remember that? I solved this equation. Um, or, or rather, I showed you the solution curves. I showed you the slope or direction fields, right? This is not an autonomous equ equation, right? So it's a non-autonomous. Um, I can give you one more example from fluid mechanics, which is my specialty, actually. So let's say that I have a tank, right? And I have an opening at the bottom and I have this flow of water, or I mean any kind of fluid that I have. Let's say this is H, this height is H. Actually, I drive this in my fluid mechanics uh, videos. So this is AW, let's say, and this is the a H, right, the small opening, and the flow is going out of here, right? So if I'm interested in dH dt, this is going to be the function of it. AH divided by AW, square root of 2gh okay so what i'm talking about here is how does this height changes okay so this height will change and these are the parameters that impact that that is a a h the small opening that i have sometimes it's called jet as well a double is the cross-sectional area and well square root of 2 times g is the gravitational field which is another function of time and h okay one thing is uh, if you look at this equation this is also a part of a separable equation, and actually I will talk about this in the next uh, coming videos. Uh, but basically I can actually move this f of y, or rather here, f of y to here, and I can move this dx to this side and take the integral of both sides, so I can have a solution in theory. But there has been some cases where this f of y is too complex for me to take, or rather integral of 1 over f of y is too complex, right? I may not be able to obtain, just want to let you know. So I'm going to have two approaches over here. In one case, Let's say I cannot find my solution analytically. That's what I'm going to deal with at first. But also, I will also deal with the cases in the next uh, couple of segments where I can solve them. And it will be fairly solvable, the examples that I give you. Okay? So, all right. Let's actually, before that, let's look at this. So, isn't this, you know, let me show you. The goal is to find the solution, right? The whole thing about this uh, section is I need to get a solution. So, if this is zero, right? If f of y is zero, then it means it's a solution of this, right? Because dy dx becomes zero, right? So 
that helps me. So I want to write what I just said to you so that you have this. The zeros of f of i, it's important, in an autonomous, not all, or de, is called critical point, that's one, equilibrium point, that's two, or stationary point. Okay, so this is kind of important that I have a copy of this for you. Also, let's say that if C is a critical point. What I mean by a critical point is, I just explained it up here, right? So basically, it gets this Fy to be zero. So this Fy turns out to be zero, that's called the critical point. Let's say of an autonomous DE, then y, yx is equal to c, is a constant solution of that particular autonomous OD or DE. Okay. So if c is a critical point of an autonomous DE, then that particular point that I have is a constant solution of that autonomous OD. So it's not very complex from this end, right? So what I want to do is I want to now uh, go ahead and investigate this with a particular example and see what is going on, okay? And I'll pick this example, dp dt is equal to p a minus b times p. And this a and b are given to me as greater than zero. So they're not negative values, they're all positive values a and b, right? So the first question that you need to ask ourselves is whether this is autonomous or not. And looking at this, note that this is the independent variable. Do I see t in here? No, so I'm good. This is autonomous. So I can apply the principles that I've learned to here. So now my goal, as you look up here, is to find the critical points, right? The zeros of f of y. What is f of y? By the way, y is p. You see that, right? Capital P is y. So then it becomes this. So p times a minus bp is equal to zero. So let me go ahead and find p. So you can see this is a multiplication of two terms, a times b is equal to 0. Either a is 0 or b is 0, or both are 0, right? So from here, I'm going to get p is equal to 0 as my one of my critical points. And the second critical point will be this, a minus b times p is equal to 0. And from here, I'm going to get my p is equal to a or b, right? So that's the second critical point. So the good thing is I was able to find all my critical points. Let's look at this dpdt value. And this dpdt, if you remember, if I plot this p as a function of t, this will be the slope, right, dpdt. So I'm looking at the slope. And I want to investigate from this from minus infinity. So let's say that I have it here minus infinity, and I go all the way to infinity. So all this whole range, what's going to happen to dp? And if you think about that, I will have two critical points that I have to assess. So I'm going to delete, divide this whole range into three segments. The first segment is going to be as a and b are positive. The first is going to be 0 because a over b will be positive. Then I will have a over b over here. Then I will have infinity. If I were to have three critical points, then I have to add one more uh, region to it. Okay. So the region 1 that I obtain then becomes from minus infinity to 0. Right. The second that I obtain will be from 0 to a over b, and the third one will be from a over b to simply all the way to infinity. Okay, And let's take a look at uh, approach each region, you know, one by one. So let's start with the mathematically, the first one. Okay, let's do it. So the first one will be minus infinity to 0. So the values will be all negative, you realize that, right? So if I go ahead and insert p is equal to minus 10, exact an, an arbitrary value. So what am, what am I going to get? Actually, let's write it over here. f of y is this, right? Let's write this nicely. Minus 10. So I'm going to have minus 10, which is p times a minus minus 10 b. Right? So this becomes minus 10 times 
a plus 10b. So is this going to be a positive or a negative sign? That's the question. Looking at a is positive, b is positive, so this value will be positive. 10 times the positive value is 10 positive, and I have a negative, so this will give me a negative value. So this will be a negative value. Let me pick up another point. Let's say that I pick um, p is equal to minus 1, another point. So this is going to be now minus 1 times a minus minus 1b, right? Okay, so this becomes a plus b, right? a plus b. a plus b is a positive value, minus a positive value becomes a negative value, all right? So the point that I'm making over here is that regardless of which p value that I pick, I, I can pick minus 1,278. All the values will end up with negative. You can try if you have time. Why don't you try 10,000 different points? You'll get what I'm talking about, okay? So I always get a negative value. What I obtained is my dp dt between this interval minus infinity to zero, I obtain myself a negative value. If the slope is negative, what does it mean? Is pt, you know, this p value as a function of time increasing or decreasing? It means it's decreasing, right? I have a negative value for it. So I get myself p of t is decreasing. Did you see this relation? I'm not saying that the value of pt is negative. I see sometimes in the exam students do this. pt is not negative. I didn't say that. What I say is this p as a function of t is decreasing because this is the slope. I'm investigating the slope. Negative slope indicates decreasing value. Okay? Two. And in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 0 to a or b. Did you to make my life easy? Let me repeat this. dp dt is equal to p times a minus bp. So I can refer back to this easier. Okay. So now I'm going to pick the values in between those two. If I say that I pick myself uh, a over 4b, I'm just making this up. Obviously, this will fall into this range, right? So what will happen is, let's put the values in dp dt, then it will be equal to p, which is a over 4b, a minus b times p, a, o, a by 4b, right? So you can see force cancel over here, I got myself 3 over 4a, right? What I pretty much get when I multiply this is I'm going to get myself, um, let's write it over here, 3a squared divided by 16b. So as a and b are positive, what will be the algebraic sign of this? Positive value, right? Let's do one more point. Let's say I pick myself p is equal to a by 2b this time. Then dp dt will be equal to a by 2b times a minus b times a by 2b, right? So you can see b is cancelled. I get myself a by 2 over here. So I get myself dp dt will be equal to a squared by 4b, right? So this will be a positive sign as well. Again, I can continue this approach and I can pick any, like I can do, I don't know, uh, you know, 3a a by 4b or whatever. You will always get a positive value over here, okay? So what happens in here is you note that now I get myself this dp dt, dp dt, turns out to be a positive value. If the slope is positive, what it means is that the value of this p as a function of t is increasing. Okay? Did you notice a trend over here? So if I select a particular region, in that particular region, I will not get a positive and negative at the same time. I'll take, I'll have one of them. Let's say in this one, I get myself a negative, it will always be negative. Over here, I get a positive, so it will be a positive. And you'll see, I will get a negative on, on this end as well, right? So this is something that you need to know, okay? So, and then I will go to the third uh, region. So third region will be this time around, a over b, two, I get myself a positive infinity, right? So now, actually, let me write this one more time. dp dt is equal to p a minus bp, right? So now, let me take the point to be 2a by p. This will be obviously more than a, a by b, right? Between, between this particular range that I get. So then this my dp dt turns out to be p, which is 2a by b times a minus b times 2a by b, right? 
So you can see over here, so B, B is cancel, and I got myself 2 minus uh, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and I'm going to get myself over here minus 2A squared divided by B, is, if I'm not mistaken, is what I get. Again, as A is positive, B is positive, this means this is a negative value. Okay, So I can go ahead and do the same thing for P is equal to 4A by B, and let's repeat very fast, dp dt is equal to 4a by b times a minus b times 4a by b. And you see here these cancel, this becomes minus 3a. So I get myself this dp by dt to b for this particular range, minus 12a squared by b. Again, same logic, I'm going to get a negative value. All right? So what's going on in here is, again, I got myself dp dt negative. So this means that this p of t is decreasing. Okay. Now I'm going to plot these in a one-dimensional axis. Okay. So this actually, let's plot it before I talk. There we go. Uh, what will happen is this is called one-dimensional face portrait. So one-dimensional. You can see why it's called one-dimensional face portrait. Sometimes people call this face line. I call it face portrait. Okay. And in here I'm gonna, um, this, this high will be plus infinity, right? Going all the way and this is minus infinity, right? And I will have myself zero arbitrarily over here and I will have myself an A by B, right? And what I have established is, if you remember, if my value is larger than A by B, I'm gonna have decrease the value. Right? Because the slope was negative. I will have increase in here. I will have a decrease over here as well. Okay? So now I'll add one more point in here. We, you, we, we indicate these by arrows. I don't think you will be very surprised by the arrow, but decreasing is like this, going down, right? Increasing will be up. Again, not that surprising, right? So if this is decreasing, then I'm going to have this decrease. Increase will be this. And decrease will be that. Just to highlight this, all right? What is the uh, slope or what is the value of this particular uh, dpdt changing? 